Okay, I have the thumbs up in the back, so thank you for joining us today. Um, I'm Heidi Joy Trothaway. I'm actually pretty new to the foundation. This is my first summit, and I work on the marketing team with lots of these lovely people in this room. Um, I'm your marketing community manager, so I'm kind of playing host to this conversation about OpenStack user group branding and about um, OpenStack days and kind of all the pieces and parts and requirements. Um, and then I'm going to ask Tom and Claire to introduce themselves. Uh, hi, my name is Tom Fifield. I'm a community manager with the OpenStack Foundation. So I do a lot of work with, uh, for example, the operator community, various user group kind of things. And uh, yes, if you're unhappy for any reason, feel free to email me at tom at openstack.org. <laughs> I'm Claire Massey. I'm with the foundation on the marketing team, I'm primarily responsible for the summit, but also help out with the community Open Stack Day events and providing support from the foundation side. All right. And um, since Claire is also kind of losing her voice a little bit, <laughs> I also agreed to do a little speaking to the Open Stack Days and then um, deferring to her for the hard questions. So um, anyway, well, let's let's start. Um, you are here probably for one of two pieces, maybe for both, um, around either user group recognition or OpenStack days um, recognition and branding. So first we're going to be talking about the goals for each of those. Um, then we'll talk about the guardrails. Those are kind of like the big box with which, within which you can do a whole lot of different things. Um, then we'll talk about the benefits. We'll, we'll dig into the logo, swag, other ways that we can recognize you, and then finally we'll wrap up and talk about um, that path to success and path to recognition, um, particularly for those user groups or OpenStack days that we feel like are not um, quite meeting all the guidelines that we need to see met um, in order to really satisfy the mission that we have here. Um, so, so really the first thing I wanted to point out was this idea of um, what are our goals? Like, what are, what are we trying to accomplish? And I'm hoping in the context of us talking for the next 40 minutes that we're really going to make this a conversation, um, particularly as you see a few later slides, I'm going to ask um, for your opinion. So, so be ready. Don't feel like this has to be something um, where you're just, just sitting and listening. Um, for us, the general principles are around being open to the community, um, being vendor neutral, making these events educational and social. Um, and then also, we really want to see both events and user groups display good citizenship, which could mean something as simple as being available to be contacted. I mean, Tom's mentioned to me that um, in a number of cases, one of the issues with a user group is just not having enough contacts, not, you know, not making yourself available to additional community members who might want to join in. Um, and then also, having good citizenship means um, doing right by the brand and, and protecting and extending on the OpenStack brand. So that's important to us as well. Um, let's talk a little bit more about goals for user group requirements. Um, Tom, Tom, what, what's your perspective on this? Um, why is it so important that we're, we're really you know, towing the line on, on uh, user group uh, responsibilities. Right, so uh, we have a large range of, of user groups around the world and they're doing some simply amazing things. Uh, whether it's getting together and organizing a hack fest, a regular meetup, a social meetup, we even have the instance of, of the uh, Japanese user group here helping us organize this amazing event with 6,000 people. And really this is about um, recognizing all of the efforts of, of those groups who've gone above and beyond uh, to, to get to that best practice level of, of user group achievement. And in addition to that, it's about helping every single group in the world uh, try and get to that best practice level and assigning them a mentor so they can step through the process and we just end up uh, having a, a place that you can go uh, that, that's welcoming and open, uh, a sustainable community through uh, every part of the world. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. And then Claire, you and I were just talking about how um, being an open stack day, uh-oh, sounds like somebody, <laughs> somebody crashed the activity out there. <laughs> you, uh, we were talking about this idea of brand promise, that there's kind of an expectation around an open stack day, that it's going to be serving the community, it's going to be open and, and inclusive, and it's not going to, you don't show up at an open stack day and run into a vendor sales pitch. 
and that that really makes it important. Right, exactly. Um, of course, the the sponsors of the Open Stack Day, um, usually the high level sponsors, expect a speaking slot. So there is some vendor pitching happening at the Open Stack Days. But we really, um, you know, hope that the the steering committee like gets users up there and, and you know brings in a lot of different companies, some of them that are competitors with each other and whatnot, and has a lot of variety in there. Unless they're going for a specific vertical, some of them do that as well instead of just being general across yeah. the board. Yeah. yeah, I like I like how that variety is encouraged mm -hmm. and that openness also, um, because it, it it really creates um, more interesting dialogue um, at the events themselves. So that's great. Thank you. All right, so let's talk about some guardrails. Um, what I'm going to do is throw a whole bunch of words on the screen that we're not going to read. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to remind us that this all exists on <laughs> the website. Um, that you can you can go dig into this to find out more, um, and that we have this available on the screen in case we do want to ask questions or drill down um, into these. If you wanted to um, speak to any of these now, Claire, we can. But otherwise, we can really just um, take your questions um, as they come up. I just wanted this to be a resource on the screen for us if we need to step back to it. Um, so I'm going to cruise right over to the next piece, which is the user group requirements. Um, and ditto, I'm going to throw a whole bunch of words on the screen that we will not read to you, because that would be weird. I, th I think it might actually be worth going through some of these. Yeah, well, um, let's find out. Like, yeah. Talk a little bit about what, what some of the issues are that yeah, you're indeed. seeing. Yeah, indeed. So uh, for example, we've got, we've got a whole range of user groups in the world in, in this kind of, uh, uh, they kind of start up because someone says, oh, I'm really passionate about OpenStack. And that's fantastic, and we like that. And then after meeting once or twice, they just die and they uh, fall into the, this disuse. And, and really, uh, one of the, the key programs that we've got with user groups that I think it's important to mention to, to start off the conversation, and because we have some of our very important participants in that program here, is the ambassador Thank program. You. So we actually have uh, together a group of, uh, I think it's about 13 or 14 people who uh, are really plugged into the OpenStack community and have run or uh, assisted in the running of several user groups at, at a very high level of expertise. And so just uh, for those of you who are, who are user group leaders in the room, uh, I'd like to introduce all of the OpenStack ambassadors uh, who are here. So uh, guys and, and girl, if, if uh, Yellow is here, could you stand up and uh, show everyone the, the OpenStack yes, ambassadors? Yes, please. Thank you. Just stand up. Yeah. And I so, and yeah. Those, these are our user group leaders. Can we also have our ambassadors stand up too? So these, these were oh, wait, our ambassadors. Oh, I'm sorry. I heard and you then, wrong. Okay. Of course, uh, many ambassadors also run a user group. Maybe we could get a show of hands. Who, all, who runs a user group here? Oh, wow. That's fantastic. Nice. Cool. <coughs> fantastic. Mm -hmm. They're really running the community. So it, it looks yeah. like we've got, uh, yeah, at least 15% uh, of our user group leaders here. That's, that's, that's really good. Yeah. All right. Um, and so these guys, the ambassadors who've just stood up, you could find their details on the group's portal and, and contact them for information about any of this. Also have to plug their session, which is happening tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., where they're going to be going through this in, in more detail. So uh, do feel free to contact your local ambassador. Sorry, Heidi, yeah, I talked no, too much. No, you're doing great. Actually, I was just stepping ahead to support <laughs> what you were saying. Um, this idea of um, the official user group process, where to find it online, um, and then also so you starting a new OpenStack user group, we have all of these resources available for you. But I really appreciate ambassadors. Um, I've seen that in some other organizations. It really, really makes a difference. So thank you, ambassadors, a lot. OK, so let's, let's keep talking. Um, let's go on to benefits. This is the exciting unveil. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, First, uh, first thing we're unveiling is um, an idea for the OpenStack days. Um, so this is the concept. When we first um, developed this, this logo and idea, um, we put it out to you and we asked you what you thought about it. And um, this is about six months ago now. And your feedback was pretty meh. Like, we, it, wasn't, it wasn't hugely embracing of the logo that was proposed because the logo was pretty far away from the OpenStack brand. So what we heard from you loud and clear is that you, we really, that you really wanted uh, to be able to 
um, embrace and own a logo that was very aligned with the visual identity of OpenStack. Um, so in this case, what we've done is um, basically take that O icon, the, you know, really the thing that um, is the linchpin of our logo, put it on a map, and that map can be re-centered to specifically speak to wherever you are in the world, and um, then include a, uh, a few words below. And then you can see this social media icon, just knowing how detailed this, the main icon is, um, that, that we have another option there. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a, no, Tokyo is in Italy, as you can see from right, right, right in the middle there. Um, no, that, that's, that's definitely why we want to call out the fact that we can move the maps around. Yeah, that's a really cool feature. Yeah. So, um, so we want to have a conversation about um, whether this is uh, meeting your needs or meeting your concerns and needs for the brand. Um, but before we go there, I also want to kind of skip forward and look at the um, very similar um, logo for official user groups as well. Um, so in the same way, Tokyo is located in Italy. <laughs> But in, in, in the same way, um, you can see that we have um, both kind of a detailed icon that's going to look great in print, it's going to look great on the web, and in um, kind of banner, large size, and then in very small format, um, the social media graphic. Do you guys want to add anything on that yet? Okay. We'll, we'll regroup there. <laughs> Now, I also want to show you another variable here um, before, we, before we, we talk logo, um, and that's around this idea of recognition. Um, so how does your official user group or your official OpenStack day show up online? Um, and so this is a great example of where um, you can really see the benefit of having taken all the steps gone through those, um, I think it was six different things that, six different tests that one needs to meet to be an official um, OpenStack user group. And, and once you've gone through those things, you really earn that recognition. Um, so I, I, I kind of like this example, um, not that these are saying who's who, but I, I, I like this example that shows, um, you know, what an official user group looks like versus an unofficial user group. Um, this could be recognition on the website. Um, and then we also see opportunities for doing additional promotion from the foundation through social media, our website visibility. Um, and then uh, Lauren had mentioned to me earlier that we would be having, kind of with some additional website changes, um, we'd be seeing more visibility on the website of user groups. So, and if you wanted to speak to that, can I give you this microphone? Okay. I wasn't sure if you were standing up to speak or just moving. I was actually um, hoping maybe we could just take a pause and slow down a little bit and get then get some feedback and conversation going. So I was hoping this could be a little bit more of a working session. But um, but yet yeah, this page, I'm sure, or hopefully many of you recognize kind of the the column on the left. This is actually the groups portal right now, and uh, and what Heidi Joy is referring to is we have. Um, actually in just this last week made the groups portal more prominent on the openstack.org web website. So now it's under the, the community drop down menu and it takes you straight to the groups portal, which hopefully drives more traffic there and into the user groups. And then we also added uh, the OpenStack days under the events drop down on the, on the main navigation as well. So again, just trying to get more visibility and drive people there. But, um, but yeah, I was wondering if maybe we could just pause <laughs> and, and go back a little bit to um, and make sure we went through like a lot of the requirements and the official user group process and many of these have been you know discussed in the community and in place for a while but I just wanted to get a sense if everyone knew about them was on board with that if there was any feedback there and then we can kind of dive into to some of the recognition stuff that we were talking about would you like me to run through the requirements for the user groups would that yeah, be helpful I, if Yes, we can. Um, just, um, I'm going to come to you with a microphone, sorry. and there's also a microphone in the middle of the room. I just want to do that for our recording. Go ahead. Uh, because, I mean, having OpenStack days and groups, uh, I mean, th I think they should be separate. I mean, uh, recognizing a, a OpenStack day as official, I mean, there's no question. Um, as of today, OpenStack user groups have been organized on Meetup, right? That's actually not uh, true for 
A few of them, yeah. Yeah, but but I mean, the, the, the place of the world that, that I live in, um, which happens to be in Europe, is Meetup organizes the groups. So if you want to look for an OpenStack group, you go to meetup.com and find it. Yep, that's true in some countries. Yes. Um, so how does that, I mean, but because that's an established process, so to speak, um, how does that link into, are we now trying to get people off Meetup? Do they have to go on to no. being? Uh, essentially, uh, we don't mind uh, which medium is used to organize the group. We believe that uh, each location will be able to choose the best tool for their effort. Uh, the groups portal does have the ability to have events on it, so you can use the groups portal to do that, but we don't require that. You're very welcome to use Meetup. You're very welcome to use whatever uh, happy social media tool is in the, the country that's popular for you. We, we don't really have a position on that. Do you think we should have a position on that? There's a microphone in the middle of the room. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so the groups portal is, is set up so that what you provide is information about your group. And Martin, the developer of the groups portal, probably has a few things to say <laughs> about that. Yeah, yeah, just, uh, just a little additional that uh, we like data. And this is one of the goal of the groups portal that we can interconnect it with the meetup.com pages and we can collect uh, all of the membership data out of, uh, out of meetups and we can build a very nice statistics. So uh, tomorrow morning you can see the results on the ambassador panel. This is one thing. With the meetup is very nice and we are also using it. But from the other side, meetup.com is a threat because you never can get access to all of your member data. Maybe you cannot get out the email addresses of the members. So, yeah. But, but we have this situation that we are using meetup.com, meetup so we are living with that. It is a historical thing. So maybe one way we can um, approach this conversation, because we have uh, several different things to talk about, um, maybe let's start by talking a little bit more about the user group requirements. Sure. And I'm looking to you for, um, for chatting and Absolutely. feedback. Go ahead, Tom. So maybe should I just run through them very, very yeah, briefly? As, as brief as we possibly can. <laughs> uh, starting from number six, which is at the very end of the slide, uh, if you're a new user group, we'd like you to partner with an ambassador and uh, they're going to help mentor you through all of these steps. So you don't even need to remember what these are, uh, because in theory, you can just ping your ambassador and say, hey, why are we not an official group yet? And they'll come back and give you practical steps that you should take to achieve that. Um, then other easy, simple ones, like uh, when you create a group in, in the groups portal, uh, we have a tick box. At the moment, we just have a tick box for the event policy, which says you agree to it. And, and that's a, a fairly standard thing that should be easy to pass. Uh, other simple things, uh, contact information. Because we don't require anyone to be on a particular site, we'd like to know where you live. And we'd like to you to keep the groups portal up to date uh, with information about where the group is living online and who's organizing it. And uh, the Groups Portal actually has pretty good Google Foo. So uh, aside from people who just use the OpenStack website to find their group, people who are Googling for OpenStack in the nearby region are very likely to come in through the Groups Portal. So you need a name for the group. It's ideal if you've got a description. Um, and we also uh, look for URLs and organizer information. Regarding organizers, it's uh, been our experience that uh, a single organizer is basically insufficient to run a sustainable user group. We've seen many, many instances where uh, single organizer groups have failed because the person lost interest, they change employer, these kind of things. We are aiming to make sustainable groups that are ongoing places that the OpenStack community area comes on. So we actually look for people uh, to have, look for groups to have multiple people involved in the organization, at, at least two, so you and a friend, fantastic. And uh, in order to make sure it just isn't uh, uh, a vendor, you know, marketing pitch kind of thing, we want to make sure that uh, if there is a corporate background affiliation, that that's diverse. And uh, that's, uh, of course, validated. We also, because there are, uh, you know, responsibilities when you're using the OpenStack brand, we want to make sure that the communications you send out are using the brand correctly. They're not 
offending people, they're not doing anything illegal, and just generally working within the spirit of OpenStack, our code of conduct guidelines, and the brand guidelines. Finally, um, meeting regularly. And uh, this is something we've deliberately not put a number on. We have some user groups in the world for whom they need to arrange armed guards for the meeting location, so it's actually entirely appropriate if they only meet once a year. If you're in the heart of Silicon Valley, you might be looking for meeting once a month, you know, for example. And uh, these few simple tests are what we're looking for in order for groups to uh, be known as an official user group. So that is a really great kind of overview. And I wanted to ask, it looks like we have a question here. Would you be kind enough to come to the middle and ask your question into the microphone so we can record you? I could. I wanted to ask if we have an official mediation policy. Uh, we have seen instances where the same region has two user groups who refuse to work together. And despite best efforts from ambassadors, from, from people, I, I, I don't know, they just don't seem to come to an agreement. So it might be a good idea to maybe yep. start some kind of an official right. policy. So that's, yeah. that's actually uh, embedded in this process. I, uh, I skipped over that. Um, there's a word there underneath the third bullet point, which is coordination. So we actually look for groups to be coordinated inside their region. So for example, uh, we have in, in India, we have a fantastic user group. They run a really good OpenStack day. Uh, of course, Claire can speak more about OpenStack days. Mm -hmm. And then there's this little splinter group in a particular city which doesn't coordinate with anyone else in India. And, uh, weirdness is going on. And so we'd like to use this process to say, please uh, work together if, if you possibly can. Additional questions. Do these feel like reasonable requirements of, a, of an OpenStack day? Or excuse me, of an OpenStack user group? Yeah. Can I ask you, please come back? <laughs> Sorry. I think the requirements seem reasonable enough. I, I, I think we need more ambassadors, if, if anything. I just, uh, uh, the number of groups is increasing, and even regionally, like I manage the OpenStack India group with a few people, and there's six of us, and we can't manage. We have like 4,600 4, users now, and it's just, it's getting out of hand. So <laughs> yeah. more, more ambassadors would be, be would be better, yeah. yes. More Thank true you. words have never been said. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. and the, the ratio of number of ambassadors to number of user groups is almost 10 to 1, right? Um, uh, just uh, almost, following yeah. up uh, his comment mm. about yes. my opinion. So if we want to make official word of user group, mm -hmm. I think it's better to have, uh, not ambassador, but I don't know the name of position, but at least one person in that official group uh, to become some type of the main contact point. Absolutely. Because before that, user group was, we don't have any official or non-official concept. User group is just a volunteer uh, group of people who are doing OpenStack. So it was okay, but if we, we want to create official, then means I think the ambassador cannot cover all the communities. So mm -hmm. the main contact point would be not just main contact point, a, a designated person in that official user group mm. might be, and recognition from the foundation that might mm -hmm. be helpful. Mm -hmm. I, that Indeed. My opinion. So that might be something we can add to the groups portal, let people specify who's the, uh, the contact point for the group. Mm -hmm. Great, good, good comment. Other thoughts on that one? Okay, I'm gonna migrate over to OpenStack days. Good luck. Um, and ask if there are Questions or comments <laughs> about the um, about the tests on OpenStack days. So I'm going to ask you to come to the microphone again. I see a couple questions too. Uh, <laughs> there is a lady behind you who also wants to to talk about OpenStack days. So I'm going to go right over to that slide. Ooh, ooh, we have I'm happy for her we have, have some excitement at the microphone. Oh, wow. You run a good session, Heidi. Oh, well. <laughs> So yeah, look, uh, I, I, guess, I guess one of the main issues or hindrances we've faced, and we've done three of them now, is uh, collecting sponsorship funds. Mm -hmm. So each vendor or sponsor has different policies. Uh, we don't have an official body that can, uh, that can receive funds. 
So mm -hmm. some sometimes organizers have to get funds into their personal account. That creates a nightmare with uh, tax authorities. Uh, I guess I guess one one concern here would be this. This also leads to a lack of transparency because if I'm receiving funds, I don't want to show my financial statement to the group. I mean that's I didn't sign up for that, right? So it's 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 a bit difficult to keep things above board. And then there is the extended payment cycles. Like we still haven't received payments for the day that finished in September or August, and it's it's almost November now. So we're yeah. still waiting on payments from from some people. I won't name anyone, but it's just it's a cumbersome process because people like myself, we go out of pocket to organize these days and then you know, it's, yeah, so maybe if there's some kind of a process that helps us, mm -hmm. it would be good. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, I, I think, it, you know, a lot of it varies country by country, probably a little bit, and um, it involves lawyers and all these things if we were to have an entity in, um, in each country um, to receive funds and whatnot, but um, that I'm also very tired. I apologize. Um, but... I don't have an exact answer for that one, but I think it's a great discussion and I can bring it up within the foundation and um, see what we can do on that um, as far as receiving funds. But as far as receiving, getting the sponsors to pay, I know a lot about that um, <laughs> <laughs> from managing the summit. So um, if you need me to um, light some fires or hold feet to the fire, I'm happy to help um, <laughs> push on companies. But yeah, it's, uh, it's, it happens. And, and for the big companies, you know, there's, there's a lot of process and sometimes it takes them three to five months to get their bills paid. And the startups, sometimes they just don't have the money or the cash flow. So yeah, it, uh, there's always different things, but we could, I usually try to, 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 to use some, you know, light, um, threatening tactics to get people to pay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. So this is definitely mm -hmm. something we should be discussing yeah. further to support um, mm -hmm. user groups as a fiduciary. Mm -hmm. okay. Right. okay, let's uh, hear from you. A question back to the office, yeah. official user group. Imagine I establish a user group and I reach that official status. Then what will happen then? What happens Wh what after is the your advantage user group of reached? being an official OpenStack user group? Uh, I'm sorry, one more time. Wh it's what the is benefits. the advantage of being official? Oh, excellent. What a great segue. Um, would, would you allow me to push pause on your question for just a moment so that we can talk more about the benefits because I actually have slides on that. Um, so and I okay. just want to um, give this lady behind you an opportunity to ask a question in case it's still on the guidelines. Is that okay? Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm uh, Francis Yu from China, uh, from United States, a uh, Chinese uh, startup company uh, uh, focused on OpenStack. And I, I, I think I have a little conference with the user group and open in China. Uh, 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 Tom, uh, Tom, Tom uh, have attended the uh, uh, conference. Uh, they, they, they build up uh, uh, chi China I open stack islands, uh, islands, <laughs> and uh, uh, many company about uh, and are involved, including uh, uh, Intel, IBM, Huawei, uh, and uh, uh, about eight company. They are uh, uh, build uh, islands. Uh, but uh, I think maybe as a uh, as a startup company uh, in this islands, islands what. Uh, our voice is so tiny and uh, no, uh, so, no so, so power. Uh, yeah. let, let me just uh, yeah. uh, just stop you there. And uh, I guess this is only really of relevance to people in China. Uh, yeah. So we were approached earlier in the year to form uh, an OpenStack China Alliance with a uh, organization related to the Chinese government. Uh, at the current point in time, the status is that we received the documents um, that we need to look through about two weeks ago. Uh, we haven't made any agreements, and uh, as far as we're going, the, the alliance hasn't started yet, and uh, we're still actually looking to make changes to ensure that it can be as open and inclusive as uh, every part of OpenStack is today. Uh, uh, what is the relationship with uh, is the user group uh, uh, OpenStack Alliance and uh, uh, China OpenStack Alliance and uh, uh, the OpenStack Day? 
So at this stage, we've just received the documents uh, a couple of weeks ago, and given that we've been really busy organizing the summit, we really haven't dug into the deep level about what's being proposed. So uh, I, I don't even, uh, you know, I can't even remember exactly what's been proposed at this stage. But um, okay. yeah, it's, it's still early days, uh, and mm. we're definitely, definitely, definitely trying to get every company and every user in China involved yeah. in any activity that we yeah. do in China. Yeah, so we, we, uh, I, I just want to make sure uh, we will involve in, but uh, uh, we just want to make everyone have the same, have the uh, equal rights in the islands. Okay. Indeed, and, and absolutely. I, I uh, agree with you, and I think that's uh, the direction that we're Indeed. trying to push. So maybe we should speak after this in the interests of, of people who are outside the country. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just maybe I've got a yeah. quick, quick question about uh, events, but not OpenStack Days. Events which are organized uh, locally, but are not OpenStack specific, uh, and where the OpenStack Foundation is not going to come and organize a booth and stuff like this because it's uh, an event that's too local. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an example of this in, in France, uh, in Paris. And um, then do we have guidelines or requirements for the user group to be able to uh, kind of represent OpenStack at these events? So can the, can the group represent OpenStack at a local event? Um, we, so you're not talking about actually hosting an event. But no, like just having a booth in a, um, in a big event. Like in Paris, we have an event called the uh, Open Source Summit, uh, stuff like this. And uh, a lot of open source projects uh, do have a, a booth there. And uh, OpenStack doesn't have a booth uh, unless the OpenStack, uh, Fran the French OpenStack user group right. goes right. there and organizes something. So. Yeah. Uh, Lauren, it looks like you wanted to take this. <laughs> Can I make sure you have a... Thing. And then I, I did promise Martin we'd talk benefits. Yes. So um, I love that idea, and I'd love for you to go represent us at those different uh, events. We've done something kind of similar with some larger industry of uh, events that happen around the world where we've pulled in different ambassadors or, or user group leaders to go there, and we've provided some funding for that. So, um, so maybe, you know, as part of this process or this framework that we're trying to put together with the ambassadors, with the user groups, we can kind of empower or fund you to do that. Uh, maybe there's some kind of, a, a, one of the things we want to talk about with the benefits is that we are trying to put more budget and opportunity behind user groups this, this next year. So um, we're trying to figure out the best ways to distribute that funding and we wanted to kind of have a brainstorm for that. So that could be one possible way. Um, we have the, the store that we've put up and we have different kits in there. Maybe we um, are able to do you know something where you can have materials to go to these different shows and, and hand out. So I would say yes, we'd love to make that happen and we can figure it out. Awesome. Thank you. And I put up the kits right behind me as an example, but we'd like to hear more about what you'd want to include. So um, I promised Martin we'd go to his question next, um, and then can we come to you next after that? Um, so Martin, you were asking about benefits specifically. Um, so in addition to the logos that we had just looked at um, and the recognition that would be on the website, on social media, um, and through additional foundation promotion, um, we had also kind of outlined this idea of a branded swag kit that we'd be able to send to you to support your official user group meetings or your open stack days. And really we wanted to hear what we felt would be most valuable to you. Um, and so perhaps we could do a little brainstorm. Um, I'm gonna repeat it into the microphone. So I'm just gonna ask, what would you most likely like to see? And that maybe that's cash and maybe that's something specific branded product. But would you shout it out and I'll repeat it into the microphone? Okay, so Gary from LA said his biggest challenge is finding so presenters. You, Ooh, he's challenging us. Speakers Bureau. Would you like to answer that? Or do you want me to jump in? Yeah. 
Yikes. Indeed. So Having for me, I'm lucky. I've got a backlog of presenters now. I can't yeah. put yes. the demand to come to OpenStack LA. But I know there are probably a lot of smaller groups, groups getting started, and that's probably one of the biggest challenges that they face. That's great. True. Yes. Absolutely. I'm lucky I've got access to PTLs. I had Guillaume from yeah. Film Tree a couple of months ago, and it's been great. But I know for a lot of people here in the middle of Missouri, you know, getting their talent is going to be tough. This is entirely true. And having been a user group organizer before, again, I've had those cold sweats. So I, I know <laughs> yeah. what they feel like. Um, the good news is we've started on something. Uh, so I don't know if anyone submitted a presentation to either this summit or the past summit, maybe even the previous one, I, I don't know. There's actually a little tick box there, which is, would you like to be added to the Speakers Bureau? So we've been collecting this data. The yeah, next... Is that is yeah. the next step. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I think really uh, there's so much effort, uh, sorry, so much uh, interest in solving this problem. We've got probably, I think, 20 people applauded instantaneously in, in this room when we heard that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it would be really, really nice to have a community effort to decide what to do with that data and, and how to present it and how to use it. But I don't know if either of you or, or Lauren have any, any more comments. Uh, I think, uh, sorry, I think I'm Yeah. No. So action yeah. item, would, would someone like to arrange a meeting for the design of the Speakers Bureau? <laughs> okay, apparently that's going to, the conversation is going to continue tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. in the ambassador's session. Awesome. Um, but we've got to do this as a priority because it is a massive pain point across the world for a large number of user groups. Yep. Yeah. Um, I want to address some more questions. You gentlemen have been standing so patiently, yeah. um, but we still have our ears open, by the way, on what additional things besides the Speakers Bureau you would like to see as benefits um, of being official. So, so let's make sure that we're uh, addressing that. But sir, you are, you're waiting so politely. Thank uh, you. I have a question about and the proposing about uh, invitation to foundation members. So OpenStack there, you are hiring a sponsor and creating a program for the keynote speaker for, from a foundation uh, is very important to uh, get their people. So, uh, but the, of course, a foundation member is very limited and they are from going to the abroad and uh, creating a traveling map is a very difficult task. So, but uh, our plan for fixing the date or open stack days are uh, very uh, influenced by the, this schedule. So, and uh, currently, uh, the Deserving the foundation member for uh, uh, coming to this open stack days of just first in first sub. So uh, I think that's uh, fair, but uh, that that is uh, impossible to uh, invite the foundation member to uh, for open stack day for a very uh, near schedule. So I think that. Uh, uh, there is uh, some more method to uh, decide uh, foundation members' uh, schedule or uh, some proposal or some uh, um, solution for that. I think that the uh, very, very yeah. I important. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So basically, right. what, what I'm hearing is everyone wants more of Mark Collier. <laughs> <laughs> we just put him on the road 365 days a year. He won't mind. <laughs> he doesn't need a life. Right. Yeah. yeah. We, I mean, there's a lot of requests for, um, you know, the foundation staff and board members to speak at OpenStack Day events. And of course, these guys have jobs and families and whatnot and don't want to live on a plane. But um, what we try to do is if we can schedule enough OpenStack Days within a region, within um, a consecutive um, 
like 10 days or something, if there's enough of them, then we can all kind of get together and fly and, and they can go and speak. And, and if we plan it far enough in advance, that's possible. So it's just kind of coordinating with the foundation far enough in advance and, and I'll help with that. So, yeah. 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 And I guess uh, another thing you could do is just, um, if you're thinking about organizing an OpenStack day and you have got a set of dates in mind, as early as you possibly can, you could even drop an email on the community mailing list to let other people in your region know, uh, or even contact other groups uh, as, as well as the foundation. Just spread those dates far and wide. Yeah, great. What is your question, sir? Um, I would like to go back to the uh, to the list of uh, requirements for official OpenStack days. We can do that. There, is, there are a couple of things. Uh, one is uh, the first two points. Basically, the way I read them is that you want the events to be non-profit oriented which in turn would mean we should be able to get a tax exam status for it. So depending on the country. So the, for the first two, my question was to the foundation, could you elaborate a little bit more on a text that we then can use for the tax authorities and say it's like, look, this is educational, blah, blah, blah. Please grant us tax exam status, uh, which will kind of help in certain cases. But, and then to the third point, bullet point on there, you say it should be open to the public. That's a very, very, very broad term that one could interpret as you, you may not charge. So what's, I would kind of like some clarification there. But so the, the two, two it's, it's, that's, that's why I wanted to point it out. So, so one is tax exempt status. Uh, the other thing is what does actually the open to the public mean? Yeah, uh, so I know there's, we're actually out of time, so I'm going to go quickly and we can talk after this. But really, the, the spirit of that is that these OpenStack days are supposed to be organized by the community, not by like a professional events organization that is trying to you know build a for-profit event off of OpenStack. Many of them do charge a fee, but again, the idea is to come up with a model where you're taking in sponsorship dollars or um, or fees to attend that are just your break-even costs. Or if you are making money off of it, you're saving it to put into other community events or activities. Um, so th that's the intent. If, if the wording's not clear, I'm happy to, to take suggestions on that as well. As far as the tax exempt status, I don't know an exact answer. I do know that some um, groups around the world have formed um, you know, local organizations, so they are able to accept funds and, and do it as a nonprofit. But um, we don't have an official relationship with those organizations from the foundation perspective. They're not like chapters of the foundation. If that makes sense, they'll set up like a local. We support like maybe a you know, in Turkey they're setting up a cloud association, and that's how they run their events. It's not necessarily like an open stack official association. So that that's the. Yeah. So this thing has to follow points. Yeah, it's so a. Yeah. So all of these are at openstack.org slash event policy, I think it is, event dash policy. So that's where these are these pieces are written down. Okay. So we're wrapped up now. I'm sorry we're out of time. Uh, but we'll be happy to continue this conversation with you later. Thank you for coming.